Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. I've been an HVAC technician for over 15 years. It's like 6 a.m. Uh, last night we had the AC turned down to about 70 degrees and uh, this morning I woke up and it definitely was not 70. Today's forecasted to be the hottest day of the year so far. 101 I think is what it said last night. I've already turned the power off in our disconnect right here. Without even opening the side cover of the air conditioner though, I'm pretty sure that it's a capacitor. So listen closely. This is all going based off of sound. So here we go. You see how the fan is just not really moving? Earlier it did actually start. This time it looks like it's not even gonna start. But oftentimes that's gonna be your symptom of a bad capacitor is either a fan that doesn't start at all or a fan that starts very slowly. So like I said earlier, it did start very slowly. So I'm pretty sure we have a bad capacitor. And the good news is a lot of times the capacitor is both for the fan motor as well as for the compressor. So you don't have to panic about it possibly being the compressor, although that is always a possibility. I should also mention that you can have a fan that runs normally with a bad capacitor if you just have a bad capacitor for the compressor. Because sometimes you have a completely separate capacitor for your fan than you do for the compressor. But most of the time they're gonna be combined, which you're gonna see in just a second. So if you do have your fan running like normal, uh, it still could be a capacitor for just the compressor. We're gonna pop this cover open and I'll show you what the capacitor looks like. Uh, we have our AC disconnect pulled out, obviously. 240 volts is a typical energy that's coming out to your uh, HVAC unit like this, so you don't really wanna mess around with that being possibly live. Now these disconnects have an off and an on position, the ones that you can turn over. Uh, a lot of them just have a switch that slides back and forth, but in the on position, the, the terminals are gonna line up and make continuity through with our 240 volts. In the off position, it just slides in and uh, they are not connected to anything. So uh, one thing that I like to do though, most of the time is just to leave the, uh, leave the disconnect on top because it's a very visual indicator that it is indeed disconnected. So of course today is a Saturday. If this uh, happened to you on a weekend, it's probably gonna cost you several hundred dollars I haven't had this open in a couple years. Now even once you've pulled the disconnect from your air conditioner, there may still be power coming into your unit uh, from the control voltage. So control voltage is this low voltage wiring typically coming into the unit, and that's what actually closes this contactor back in here to allow the system to work. And we can actually see that that contactor is indeed pulled in right now and that is being powered from the HVAC equipment in the house. Typically a gas furnace or an air handler. Uh, it's not really hazardous voltage, so it doesn't actually bother me if that's still on, but if you wanna be extra safe, you could turn off the breaker to your furnace or air, air handler in the house in order to de-energize the control voltage coming out here. In rare cases, this could have a 120 volt coil in it. The coil is the electromagnetic coil uh, back in there that pulls that uh, contactor closed. So if you did have 120 volts coming into the side of this, it could be a little bit more hazardous. In this case, and in probably 99% of the cases, it's gonna be 24 volts nominal. If you measure it, it's gonna be closer to 28 volts coming in on this side of the contactor over here, as well as this side of the contactor over there. That's where our, uh, our power goes for pulling in that contactor. So right up there at the top, that's our capacitor. Now I can't actually see any visual indications of it being bad right now. Uh, we're gonna remove it from the cabinet here. The important information is right there on the side. We have a, a 45.5 microfarad, plus or minus 5%, and this one's 440 or 370 volts AC. You can replace the capacitor with one that has a higher voltage rating but never lower, unless you were to actually check the capacitor volts. So some, some air conditioners come with 370 volt capacitors, 
some come with 440. Oftentimes companies will carry just 440. Uh, therefore you may have a 370 volt uh, capacitor unit originally that has been replaced with the 440 but anyway just go with the 440 if you're not sure. Up here at the top it's important to note where your wires are landing. You can see we've got three different spots. We've got Herm which is for our compressor. Herm is abbreviation, an abbreviation for Hermetic. And then the common is going to be where those two wires are landing. I'll show you the markings on the capacitor in a minute. And then the fan is going to be that brown wire back there in the corner. Now one thing I do like to do is just to write on the capacitor where the wires were. So I'd write Y next to this yellow wire, B next to the brown wire, and then R and P next to the red and purple wires. Now uh, with capacitors, they have the ability to store an electrical charge for a time. So you always want to go ahead and make sure that you have no voltage with an electric meter. If you don't have an electric meter, you can use this method as well. But you should wear safety glasses or at least look away while you're doing this. Because when you cross these terminals right here, that'll short out any charge that may still exist within the capacitor. But if there is a charge, it will spark. So you don't want to get molten metal in your eyes. So that is fine. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect our wires now. Right here on the top of the capacitor, you can see that common terminal like I was saying. So that just means that that's where our voltage is really coming into our capacitor and then going out of the capacitor to the compressor and the fan, these two terminals right there. I will link to capacitors like this in the description, the most common sizes. And I'd recommend picking up two of them if you can. They're not that expensive um, because these do just kind of randomly fail. This one is probably only about two or three years old and it's gone bad again already. All right, let's go grab our replacement capacitor and then we'll test this one to see if it is actually working. We're hoping that this is indeed bad. Now one physical sign of them failing, if you see this bulging up on the top or if it seems like it's swollen at all, uh, that oftentimes is an indicator of the capacitor having failed. But sometimes they fail with no sign of physical damage at all, which I think is the case with this one. Real quick, let's test our capacitor. We're going to use our Field piece ST, SC260, I'll link to this in the description. It's a great HVAC uh, troubleshooting electric meter. And then we have to hit our select button until it says NF right there. And now we'll go ahead and test from our common terminal to the Herm. And if this was a good capacitor, we'd be getting close to 45 right there. We're getting zero. And then over to the fan, we should be getting five. And we're also getting zero. So definitely a bad capacitor, so that's great news. That means most likely this is going to be the only thing that we have to replace. You can get cheaper uh, electric meters that will test the same function. This one I think is like a $30 meter. And it also has the ability to do that capacitor test. There it is right there. So I'll link to both of these. This one's like 100 bucks or so. This one's about 30 so you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a meter although if you can spring for it just get a nice one because you're gonna have it for a really long time here in the parts room we have a few different capacitors to take a look at uh, I actually don't see a 40 slash 5 capacitor and in case you were wondering or uh, I didn't I don't think I explained this already basically that 45 is gonna be 45 microfarad capacitor for the compressor for the Herm terminal and a 5 microfarad capacitor for the fan terminal. So it's technically just called a dual capacitor. It's two capacitors in one. If you do just have a single capacitor, it's not going to have that dual rating. Like all those ones up there are individual ratings. Those are mostly 5 microfarad capacitors. I did just find a 45 5 capacitor in the service van here. Now even if I hadn't written down which wires go where, Yellow is almost always going to go to your compressor, brown is almost always going to go to your fan, and then the other wires are going to go to your common terminal. But you can't always rely on it, which is why it's always good to mark them. If any of your um, connections feel excessively loose, you want to go ahead and just pinch these uh, connectors down a tiny bit before you slide them back on. Okay, our wires have been reattached. We'll go ahead and reattach our bracket that holds 
the capacitor in place. Now just to be proper, I'll go ahead and put the cover back on before I energize it. We should hear the compressor start immediately if that was the problem. <laughs> it is 6.56 a.m. and we are done with fixing the air conditioner. Capacitors are oftentimes one of the most common things that fails on these and they're a surprisingly easy fix. If this video helped you out, uh, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And if you need a couple parts for your air conditioner, use those links in the description. Those are affiliate links, so that'll help uh, support the channel just a tiny bit. Thanks so much for watching. I'll put more air conditioning related videos here on the screen. I've got one talking about AC gauges and how to charge and check the charge of an R22 and R410A air conditioner. So check those out and we'll see you over there in just a few seconds. See ya.